So welcome back to Conclave 2022. And we're here for our second, uh, second meeting on uh, day one, Friday of Conclave. And uh, our, our guest here is the Reverend James Ishmael Ford. Uh, Reverend James uh, has walked the spiritual path for more than 50 years. He's danced with Sufis, studied with Gnostics, uh, lived in a Buddhist monastery, and was ordained as Zen priest. Uh, he also, and we'll discuss this at the tail end of the talk, uh, uh, he also was ordained in Christian holy orders. Uh, later on, he was also uh, ordained as a Unitarian Universalist minister and preached from the high pulpits in old New England churches. And I visited some of those. Uh, James has reflected on and written books about spirituality and at the same time has worked in the trenches for social, social justice. He has lectured at Harvard Divinity School, Meadville Lombard Theological School, and the University uh, of the West. He's appeared on our Talk Gnosis uh, podcast, as Jonathan can attest, and he's also uh, appeared on the Lectern, which is the AJC's Conclave pod podcast, and I had the good fortune to meet James in person some years ago uh, in Boston. It was a very, uh, very enjoyable experience. So here's he's here today to talk about the knowing of Zen Buddhism. So with that, I'm going to switch the spotlight uh, over to you. Did you need to use slides at all? Uh, I, I it, we're not doing slides. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we, I, 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 I feel fortunate. We're communicating at all. Uh, <laughs> Fair um, enough. <laughs> uh, uh, so, thank you all. I I'm, I am speaking kind of blind. All I see myself is a picture of me holding forth. Uh, um, uh, uh, Bishop Sean, I hope that you would be willing to uh, um, check in with people, and and I love to pause and 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 clarify, respond to questions. Uh, um, meet outrage, whatever is appropriate in the in in the moment. Uh, oh, and now I yeah, see. You. Happy to do so. Oh yeah, I'll I'll switch it back and forth. So I'm the low budget camera operator today. So well, we can happy happily take a pause whenever you need it. And of course, if anybody has any technical or different issue or difficulty or a question, you can simply just uh, raise your hand. Um, and uh, uh, one of us will give the direction, or you can pop it into the chat, and we'll get to it when appropriate. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, you know, the, the subject, knowing in Zen, uh, uh, I got yeah, a little play on, on Gnosis there. One of the things that, that I find uh, uh, important and possibly a, a, a spot of connection for, for all of us together is that the, the salvific uh, um, enterprise in the Zen tradition is is a, a kind of knowing. We tend to prefer the word not knowing, uh, but it, it speaks to uh, uh, um, a fundamental insight into the na nature of the human condition. I uh, would like, yes, oh, uh, and I think cues are going to be a little interesting as they they pop up. Uh, secrets are going to emerge. I, 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 I guess in our in, in our time together. Uh, I come from the the Mahayana perspective, the Great Way, which is uh, you know a subdivision of Buddhism. It's insights into uh, um, the human consciousness, human mind, human heart. Uh, um, I do love the Chinese pun on Shin. Uh, uh, it means both uh, mind and it means heart. And uh, and I think you know uh, the, the the wisdom of the heart is is ultimately what we're we're all all about. I I I, I, I believe. So I um, would like to touch upon some primary spiritual uh, assertions that are that are associated with Mahayana Buddhism. To me, they they speak to what we're talking about when we say mind and what we say in heart and how we encounter this this world that we that we all share. Um, uh, for me, they're encompassed in the four seals of existence, the two truths and the three bodies of the Buddha. Uh, all these are uh, technical terms within in the Buddhist way. I am a little wary of dogma. Um, nonetheless, I find these are really helpful pointers uh, to the structures of the human heart. Uh, 
Um, there's certainly uh, how I've encountered uh, reality in, in my life. Um, now, <clears throat> everything needs to be held lightly, subject to mutation, change, correction. These have so far been the great pointers uh, for, for my life uh, uh, in this Saha passing world. Uh, <clears throat> these assertions about reality and how to find it uh, down to my bones and marrow are why I choose to call myself a, a, a Buddhist um, and why of the many authentic ways I bow into the specific tradition that is Zen. Um, uh, if there are any authentic first principles uh, to a spiritual life, certainly the Zen Buddhist spiritual life, I think these express it. The four seals. The four seals are observations about the nature of things uh, and specifically our human condition. Uh, the formulation of the four seals, I, I dug around and I see it doesn't actually seem to date any later uh, than a text called The Questions of the Naga King Sagara. Uh, which itself doesn't seem to date any earlier than the third century before our common era. So a couple of centuries after the death of the historic uh, person we know as Gautama Siddhartha, the Buddha of history. Um, now, at the same time, it's simply an explicit ordering of something that probably was uh, uh, um, at the heart of, of uh, if not the Buddhist teachings specifically, of, of Buddhist teachings from very close in. The first three, first of the these uh, is impermanence. Everything is made of parts, and they inevitably will come apart. Uh, this speaks to the fundamental structures of the universe, as well as the creations of our minds. Uh, but it's the mind, uh, it's the heart that is really most critical for us. I believe we're real. We are impermanent. The second of, of these is no self, um, uh, or it can be said the emptiness of the self. And that is there is no abiding self. The self is real. Uh, um, we're real. You and I are real. Pinch, pinch any of us and we will hurt. But our existence is mutable. Um, and in the end, we are mortal. Nothing escapes the dissolution of the body. The wonderful mystery that we are, our unique noticing of the universe, our little corner ends. The third of these axioms, uh, dis-ease, disquiet, the technical ter term is dukkha. Um, it is the motion of things rising and falling. And we human beings experience this as painful, causing anxiety, or we experience it actually as anxiety. Uh, sometimes we experience it actually as anguish. Uh, I call this encounter, this thing as we notice it, the buzz. Uh, the buzz is the back of everything we encounter, behind every victory, behind every loss. <clears throat> so uh, these three are sound found um, in many lists uh, as, uh, as the three marks of existence, but they lack something. And uh, so I turn to the four seals uh, and that, that fourth one is there's a way through the hurt. Um, and this is specifically the good news of Zen Buddhism. While the buzz belongs to the universe, it's the experience of everything in motion, the buzz as discomfort, dis-ease, anxiety, or anguish that belongs specifically to our human world. Given the size of the cosmos, human here would be any being with a consciousness that can, can discern the first three seals. And with that, there's a way through. We can call it enlightenment. We can call it awakening. We can call it knowing. We can call it not knowing. I like peace. Buddhism Zen is about awakening um, the fourth seal of the intimate way. So um, before I move into the other parts, maybe questions, clarifications, concerns, uh, um, I was just gonna. I was, I was just gonna mention. 
um, just a, a comment. One thing that uh, occurred to me, uh, um, you know, uh, from a conversation that I had years ago with my predecessor is that he always referred to uh, uh, um, a possible translation of dukkha as dissatisfaction. And I was, and and that's fairly accurate. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I mean, this is this is the problem. Dukkha itself is one of those words that probably should be taken into English um, on on translated because the 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 level of nuancing is is gigantic. Uh, so dissatisfaction, di- unsatisfactoriness, uh, anguish is a real popular translation. Um, uh, um, so uh, yes to James's term, but but yes to many others as well. Hence, hence probably dukkha is the word that 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 we we probably want to 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 claim. You know, it, what, what's that line about in the English language that you know we 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 don't just borrow; we mug other languages and alleys and rifle their pockets for 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 spread. You know, for for odd odd words uh we we like to just absorb um and this is one that probably is best taken in whole um what i can say is that the most common usage has been suffering Mm -hmm. and and suffering is again a, a totally legitimate aspect of of this but but it's in incomplete by itself it, it it implies things that are not necessarily so the universe is the buzz you know uh um the universe feels this motion and this equilibrium and every creature in it does but it takes creatures like us who have who who have misunderstood the shape of the universe and think that we're permanent and it and the buzz gives lie to our permanence and Hence, you know, dukkha. I was going to say the the human race has a knack for even taking the nature of the term suffering and making it even worse or insufferable <laughs> by by splitting it into uh, further hairs. I would imagine. Uh, are there any? You know, it yeah you know, was the Tom Waits line, the wonderful line about you know our you know uh, uh, our suffering is too exquisite to to allow bad writing. Uh, you know, there are many ways to. Yeah, to to yeah, cheapen the cheapen the the, the experience. So um, with that, you know, so these are axiomatic. Th- these are assertions that if they, you know, if if they fall, the whole structure falls. But um, um, they are the premises upon which we 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 uh, we we proceed. Um, um, with them are what. Uh, um, um, are called the two truths, and uh, um, the two truths, as we we encounter it, finds its normative form with the fourth century monk Nagarjuna. Um, he established the exact identity of the world as understood within with the image of dependent origination and boundlessness. Uh, um, the two truths can be summarized as four. Um, everything exists within a play of mutual mutual causality, creating, living, dying, the phenomenal world. Emptiness, the absolute emptiness of these things rising and falling. Um, we humans naturally apprehend the first of these two truths, the phenomenal world, by close observation. The second insight, which is accessible to the human consciousness, um, is recessive. We normally have to seek it with the aid of practices of presence. Um, um, Rather more complex is the radical identity of these two truths. Uh, while it is possible to find these principles with the, the Nikayas, the, the earliest preserved writings uh, of the Buddhist way, uh, um, they are not developed for hundreds of years. And this is where Nagarjuna um, and the great apophatic texts like the Prajnaparamita cycle uh, sing into our hearts an ancient truth. The formless world and the world of form are in fact one thing. Um, Nagarjuna is generally credited for sorting it out. He presents the facts of these two truths and their absolute identity with, with a razor sharpness. 
Um, um, and, and as a logician, he takes, takes no prisoners. Uh, personally, I found what it can really mean best when this insight and the attendant practices to support finding it began in China. Um, the encounters of Zen adepts, as they say, uh, showed rather than explained. Um, and then again, for me, especially through A. Hey Dogen's uh, the 13th century Japanese master's poetic pen, I found my own heart and my being drawn into what these two truths mean as a living reality. Uh, for us on the Zen way, the spiritual project is living into these truths. Uh, we, we normally start with our plain observation of the phenomenal world. It is as it is. Uh, a term that's rather rather commonly used these days, but uh, yeah, just because we all say it doesn't mean it isn't so. The world is as it is. While temporary and causally related, it's real. And I really want to underscore that. You know, what we experience is real. It's not a dream. And then, or we need to read to find dream. Um, um, and the next thing is to notice how everything within the phenomenal world is wildly open it's boundless it's empty um, the spiritual project from zen this is our gnostic way is to notice the world that we are that we are boundless and then beyond either sense of separation or connection and then letting go of that sense beyond separation or connection uh, in Zen, we call it uh, not one, not two. Um, in many ways, this is, in fact, the pivot observation for Zen. Um, and one more point, one more point, <clears throat> which, it, again, you, you may notice that the salvific enterprise here all along the way is, is about, you know, the way we, we uh, encounter the world. Uh, um, it's, it's not, it's not a vicarious atonement. It's not, uh, you know, there's, there, there, it, it's, it's, it's how we personally in our own beings and with our own minds uh, meet the world. And we do it a couple of ways. And that's where we're, or actually, we meet, we meet a lot of ways, but three are the three are the, the, the popular ones. Uh, um, it's it, and in Buddhism, it, it's Trikaya, our own little Buddhist trinity, uh, the the three bodies of the Buddha. Um, um, it's uh, not fully developed until the fourth century. Um, we find it really emerging as a philosophical uh, presentation in the Yogacara school, um, and it defines how we encounter reality um, um the, the 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 first two parts that you'll notice are kind of revisiting what we've already talked about a little bit um, um but but they're fleshed out and they're given some um, um some significance and then as a spiritual enterprise really the third one becomes like like you know very important in my old age where i find myself tumbling so Nirmanakaya, uh, first body of the Buddha. That's the Buddha of history. Um, that would be, you know, Katama Siddhartha. That would be you, me. Uh, um, everything that rises and falls, you know, the, the, the phenomenal and the limited world. Garmakaya, um, the second of these is the, 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 the cosmic Buddha, the Buddha uh, empty of substance. Um, there is no part that abides. Everything has passed. Um, so those we get, that's the absolute, that's form of emptiness, that's, you know, all this. But then out of that oscillation, something else often emerges. And that's Sambhogakaya, um, the third place, uh, the place of mystery. Um, traditionally, this is called the body of bliss. Uh, um, and now, I, I personally, on my own spiritual journey, I've fallen. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a Jungian uh, um, for for a boatload of reasons. But, but I'm touched by by aspects of the Jungian tradition, especially the archetypalist uh, movement and and James Hillman. Um, I do like him a lot, and 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 he has helped me a lot. Um, 
up, especially as we start moving into this tumbling into that liminal space that is not exactly Dharmakaya, not precisely Nirmanakaya. Uh, uh, here, where our hearts engage the mystery, where the rising and falling feels less concrete and more fluid, dream and metaphor become the language of this body. But as wonderful as it is, it doesn't end there. Uh, I think of uh, that, in, you know, uh, of all the suffering in, 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 in this world, uh, you know, big news today uh, in the American political uh, scene, um, a cascade of big news is that, that, that um, speak to great divides in the, you know, in the body politic. And with that, the actual tangible suffering of human beings. The war uh, between, you know, Russia, Russia's inv invasion of the Ukraine, starvation in so many places at this moment, all of that, all of these things beyond our control um, um, and the things that we can't touch, uh, um, all of it bound together into this realm of interdependence, of interrelatedness. So, so what I'm trying to point to here is actually not about lists. Uh, um, um, it isn't about good analysis. Uh, it's about a hungry child. It's about your restless heart. It's about how we meet this world. And I can't express my gratitude enough for this path. Um, 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 uh, the Zen teacher, Zenju Earthland Man, Manuel once said, it becomes natural. Uh, we welcome the Dharma as it has welcomed us from long before we were born. Um, it's organic. It's physical. It's an intimate way. And it's about not turning away. Uh, it's about learning, leaning into the gift of, and learning to hold with open hands. A bad metaphor, but I hope it points. Uh, uh, hold all things to your heart, but be ready to let go. Uh, Mary Oliver sings it best. Um, to live in this world, you must be able to do three things. Uh, to love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your life depends on it. And when the time comes to let go, let it go. So the tugs of our connections, uh, 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 you know, and I can go on and I, and, and I think I have time to go on, but I, I want to hit pause and, uh, I just, just going to mention we're 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 good to go a little bit over our scheduled time because Jonathan's talk is going to be a little bit uh, shorter. He figures or whatever, so the the time that we lost in the beginning, we can tack on the end. We'll be safe. So. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about in the in the moment uh, uh, before I shift gears and move into uh, the ten oxygen pictures? Um, I actually had a question, and I, and I don't know. I, I had two kind of questions, and this might get a little bit. I don't know, technical, at least at my level. I mean, I'm an amateur where, where Buddhism is concerned, but I figure, you know, as I have a Zen master in front of me, I should take the opportunity to, to pick your brain. So this kind of connects to the trikaya that you mentioned, um, uh, which I'm aware of. Well, there, so there, there's two things, and maybe these are simple yes or no answers, but I mean, lots of religions, of course, are fans of, you know, triads, triplicities, you know, that kind of thing, trinities. Um, and of course, Buddhism in all of its forms has the Buddha, the Dharma, and the, the Sangha, right? So I was wondering, you know, because I naturally like to, you know, connect and sort correspondences because I practice esotericism and putting things in charts is what we do. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess I would ask, um, you know, is there a correspondence, let's say, between the, the triple jewel, the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and the, uh, you know, uh, Nirmanakaya, Dharmakaya and Sambhogyakaya, or is that just me making a, a connection because the, the numbers are neat and tight? Three, people like threes, yeah. 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 Um, actually, uh, uh, if you want a, a kind of an esoteric connection, I wouldn't so much look for a comparison between uh, um, uh, um, the, the, the Buddha Dharma Sangha. Uh, I, I suppose, you know, we're, 
we're smart creatures. We can do that. Uh, but it would be a bit of a job. Uh, a rather, uh, something that actually caught my mind the other, a little while ago was the, the, the way the, 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 the trachea and the Trinity can play, uh, uh, can play at, at, Somewhat deeper levels. Uh, uh, let's see if I can actually yank that up. Uh, it's it's nice having uh, uh, having one's uh, 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 resources right at the tip of their of, of uh, actually actually I don't know if it's wonderful or not. My uh, uh, my spouse used to uh, forbid me when talking with people to go start going over to the library. Um, and now she, she gets a little twitchy when I start going to the Google machine, uh, when I'm having a conversation with humans. But, um, uh, I, I found it, it, I, I was, I was wandering. It was, I was, oh, it's because it was Trinity Sunday. And I was, so, you know, just a few days ago and June the 11th. And I, uh, I found a, a clip online called Lutheran Satire. And, and they're, 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 you know, they're, they're pretty good if you don't poke too deeply into their, their premises. And what they, what they wanted to do was mock, uh, St. Patrick's bad analogies to the Trinity. And, and they were good at poking the bad, bad analogies. But then when they finally came to the assertion of what the Trinity, what the Trinity was, they had to fall back on parroting back Athanasius's creed because it makes no sense other than, you know, as an assertion. Um, um, however, uh, you know, uh, I thought, let's see, what is it? In my own, in my own notes, uh, 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 talking about my own encounter with the trinities, I realized what was it? I, uh, I'm a high school dropout. Um, I didn't, you know, I collected college degrees, but not until, you know, I was old, older. Uh, and um, um, I was working in a bookstore and I was going to school at night. And, and I really, uh, um, some, my phone is getting warm. Jan, my phone is getting warm. Is that an issue? Sorry, tech support on this side is going to. No worries. To, to, to check in. Uh, uh, um, I took an art history course and the professor uh, said the actual point of the art history course is simply so that if you're in a cocktail party in the future, you, you won't look like a complete idiot if the subject turns to art. And so there are a variety of things that we... This can be interesting. Oh, that's not so good. I'll get you some. Okay. She... <laughs> My phone is now leaning against a pint of half and half. Uh, uh, <laughs> hopefully that will, uh, uh, well, chance going, going off in quest, quest of ice. So, um, then he drew the, the there's, I still, I'm speaking of, you know, I, this is one where it would have been nice to have a, a slide. Um, he, he pulled, he showed us the image of the medieval, uh, the, the scutum, Fide, fide uh, um, the shield of fate, and um, it, it appears to have no—no no one knows its image, but it emerges. We see it starting in about the 12th century, and um, the first certain account uh, is uh, from a uh, Peter Poit Poitier, uh, um, and it's that one I, you know, where the there's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In the middle is God, and then there's these. The Father is not the Son, is not the Holy Spirit, and then it has you know the the Father is God, the Son is God. The, there's a similar one with the Kool Aid Man. The Kool Aid Man isn't the uh, isn't the Kool Aid, isn't the pitcher, you know it, that kind of thing. Well, well I, I, yeah. it, it's obviously set up for for mockery, um, yeah. and yet it speaks to this kind of dynamic in the universe, you know, uh, especially if you start looking more broadly at what the, you know, what the son might be and what the Holy Spirit might be and what the father might be. Um, it's rather, rather dynamic. I, um, um, I believe that uh, um, we can look at, 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 tr uh, at trick, at trichia, the, the formless world, the, uh, the the uh, the world of form and the dream world 
uh, um, um, you know, and, and I don't know, maybe the real is in the middle, you know, <laughs> is and is not kind of works. Uh, Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, you can play with it. Yeah. There's things you can, you can find that, that might even be useful. I mean, because the, you know, the, the thing with lists is that, that they're useful. Um, the problem is that we can get kind of really into it. We just, at the end of the day, have nothing but a list. Uh, um, similar to compiling uh, recipes for, you know, in a cookbook. Uh, yeah, at some point we'll have to cook. The, uh, sorry to, to to recap that because I'll probably uh, I'll probably give that audio a, 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 a quick wash. Um, in either in in either Ten, Tendai or Shingon, one of the Japanese esoteric Buddhism, Buddhisms, they have the concept of original enlightenment. Essentially, the idea of uh, I guess kind of a, a palingenesis, a, a return to a primordial state free of the the layers that get added on either through existence or life or time and some of this has you know in my mind some some comparative to gnosticism in the west that enlightenment or salvation isn't something you acquire that you don't that you don't possess it's something that you uncover that already exists within you so I guess I, I would ask in, in terms of self-knowledge or salvific type of stuff, um, is that concept also found in Zen? Well, original awakening is, is a, yeah. a okay. is indeed a, you know, it absolutely is in a, a Zen principle. Um, um, hence the term awakening, you know, we, we, uh, um, we, we are, we, we are, you know, we are enlightened, fully realized um, from before our birth. Um, the problem is, yeah, is our, our delusive thinking. You know? and, and so um, a, a lot of the project is, is, is not learning something new, it's unlearning unuseful and, and false things about ourselves. Um, uh, uh, the the un unuseful and false things about ourselves are that we are isolated, separate uh, entities. Um, well, it's, it, 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 as near as I can tell, the, the way the way it seems to work is that is that some animals are fast, some animals are strong. Um, we're smart, and smart uh, is that we can slice and dice and predict. Uh, we can observe that you now all animal, you know, all many animals, probably all mammals. Um, and probably reptiles, uh, birds for sure, um, can um, observe phenomena and and and, uh, um, and predict uh, behaviors. And you know that's how you can how uh, a cat can track you know uh, prey. Uh, and and we do it, but we do it better than everybody else. And I don't know what isolated intelligence is, so I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, uh, but but what I do know <laughs> is that is that humans uh, uh, are extremely good at 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 looking at the phenomenal world, taking apart, taking apart, predicting, and and succeeding. It it has made us the you know the 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 top predator. We're the top of the food chain. Um, the catch is reification. Uh, we have an inclination to take this world that we have created out of the the information that is coming to us through through our six senses and um, um, and then ascribing permanence to it and 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 that's where things start falling apart uh, because the world is in fact dynamic it's in, in motion at all times uh, uh, form and emptiness uh, and the dreams that emerge out of it are happening all the time and uh, um, um, the deluded mind, the, the mind that, you know, we, we, we acquire as an unfortunate side effect to our, to our strength is this delusion that we're separated. Uh, original awakening is, the, is simply the assertion that, silly boy. <laughs> Thank you. You're bad. Uh, um, so I'm sorry, I didn't know what that, I, the, the term disappeared, but I don't know what isolate, uh, intelligence is. Uh, um, although, you know, I mean, being a human and 
you know, I, I, I could, I could, I could froth up a meeting. Well, I think just because I have a, I have a degree of familiarity and forgive me, Chris, if I get this wrong, but I have a degree of familiarity with all things, uh, Western esotericism. So I assume that that's actually something that comes out of the left-hand path of things, because that sounds like a, a, a temple of set term. Um, and I think where they would where they would take that as an analog, I guess the best way to, to kind of roll that into mainstream religious tradition would be uh, the concept of uh, well, I guess a mix between apotheosis as a concept, right? You know, divinization, but so more apotheosis like Greek and, and Roman gods as opposed to theosis and in Eastern Orthodoxy. I mean, think of the, think of the saint that, that has a, a measure of um, union with the divine, but retains their personality, I guess would, you know, do I have that right? I like okay. that. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's essentially, so, so that, that kind of, that kind of union with the divine while retaining a measure of identity is basically the, the, the analog for that. I, I actually like that a lot because part of the point here, um, 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 and, and when I'll get into this a little bit, if, if when we as we unpack the the Oxford pictures, is that is that the the there there is kind of a progression uh, in in normal human consciousness who when you're on the uh, the intimate way. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and it, it, you know, we notice there's something wrong. <laughs> uh, um, we, 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 we begin often the, 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 the thing we, the first thing we need to really see is that, that, you know, everything we think, think is wrong uh and and we begin to uh, uh we can come to this spot where everything is wildly open you know um um everything is one, everything is empty. We use a lot of different language. You see it in all the spiritual language, literature in the world. Um, where sin is really cool is they say, and that is not yet our way. Um, um, we need to move beyond, you know, we need to move beyond form. We need to move beyond emptiness. And we start moving into this, into this, the, 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 the realm, the, the realms of freedom. And, and uh, maybe that's a good spot, unless there's something else that somebody would like to talk about, to talk a little bit about the, the 10 Oxfording pictures. Go for it. Okay, great. So uh, now what I'm doing, what, what I'm pulling, pulling up here uh, uh, on the other side of the bag of ice in which the phone is resting uh, is uh, um, I'm currently working. I, I, I'm currently actually in in conversation with with uh, Shambhala, uh, and I, um, um, uh, to do my sixth book. And uh, we, we, I guess, the tentative publication dates, you know, like eighteen months out from now. So a little peek into the uh, uh, into the, the the future of James's writing life. And and what I'm what I'm what I'm interested in in this exploration is the arc of the spiritual life. Uh, um, what what does it look like from birth to death? You know, um, and and while we each walk our own path, there are commonalities that we share. There are things that that we can see, especially traps that we can fall into, but also graces. You know, that small gifts and blisses, and, and but the path itself. You know, towards towards maturation, towards depth, towards awakening. Um, um, uh, there, there, there's a, a kind of a, a, a wonderful map, and I give I give it a little chapter, and and then I, you know um, it happens to be I forget what it is, Joe. But I don't have it here. Um, I I uh, um, um, uh, give it a little a uh, you know, little beginning with a poem from uh, Izumi uh, Shikibu. Um, 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 poet, uh, Japanese poet, I forget what she is, 16th century, 17th century. Although the wind blows terrible, terribly here, the moonlight also leaks between the rough planks of this ruined house. So the map um, within the Zen way is called the Tin Oxering Pictures. Um, and, and now it's always important when we use the word map, you know, uh, uh, to underscore, there is no perfect map. 
I was going to mention it might be uh, relevant and good for folks to actually, uh, if you've got a browser open, to look up the 10 Oxfording pictures so we don't have to try and put them on the screen because we're ma maintaining that tenuous uh, internet connection, uh, you know, so so that you don't have to put it on the screen or use slides. If, if folks have a phone or a browser handy, just look up the 10 Oxfording pictures and just keep them keep them at hand. Yeah, and that, that, what a brilliant suggestion. And, and there are millions of them. Um, in fact, I'll talk about a little bit about that. Um, 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 as to maps themselves, many maps too, a zillion of them. Uh, all the work of people, um, as, as in human beings. Oh, look, yours. Thank you, Jeffrey, with the, oh, good old tricycle. Always, yeah, they're really good. Sometimes their stuff is uh, um, behind paywalls. But if that's it, that's great. Um, so uh, um, all maps are flawed. Uh, however, if they've gained sanction over time, they probably offer some truthful angles on the deep. Uh, uh, you know, and, and just you know, I speculate a little bit about maps. Uh, you know, you can say hero's journey. You know, there's there's your, you know the, an idea. I personally am very fond of the 16th century uh, Chinese version of hero's journey, uh, journey to the West. Uh, 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 here in the West, I think probably the biggest one is the life of Jesus turned into a cycle. Uh, there's a map there to look at. Um, other maps in this world, I think, would be the Zohar, the ascent of Mount Carmel, the Bag of Gita, the Tao Te Ching. Um, Many maps in part, none in whole. Uh, um, and Zen has its own, yeah, the, the 10 Oxford pictures, uh, sometimes simply called the 10 bulls. Uh, the metaphor is a bull or an ox is the image of ourselves and our hidden hearts is ancient one. Uh, in the putative earliest strata of Buddhist text, the, the Mahagopalakata Sutta features the image of our path is to, so Sutta uh, thread, and th that's usually uh, 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 telegraphs that this is putatively the words of, of the Buddha himself. Uh, um, so there's an image of our path as taming a wild calf. Uh, the earliest strata of, uh, uh, of a map as a Zen thing appears to be a five-step version by an 11th century Chinese master, uh, Ching Chu, uh, which features a gradual whitening of the image of the bull until there is simply an empty circle. Uh, that conclusion is corrected uh, by a rough, rough contemporary and others at Master Zide Hui uh, who adds in a sixth picture uh, uh, after emptiness, which I think from what we were talking about a little bit earlier is kind of important not to get trapped in emptiness. Uh, 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 then there's another uh, uh, map. Actually, you can find a really beautiful little book with a translation by uh, Red Pine uh, with eight of an eight, eight image uh, book. Um, but the version that has captured most of us on the path uh, and who find it a true representation of our way was formulated by a Rinzai Zen master, Linji Zen master, uh, Kuan Shi Guan in the 12th century. Uh, eventually, it makes its way to Japan and by way of early translator and interpreter uh, to the, of Zen to the West, D.T. Suzuki, to us. Uh, today, there are numerous commentaries on the text, starting with those from Kuan himself. Uh, um, rummaging around my bookshelves, I found five by contemporary teachers, uh, Chinese, Japanese, and American. Um, it's a perennial on the perennial way. Uh, next reading picture one. Um, um, it begins with noticing something is missing. Uh, for each of us, it might be something different. For me, at first, it was all about God. Yeah, my, uh, um, uh, for me, the first question was, does God exist? Uh, uh, those of us on the spiritual journey usually can say what our question is, um, but just a little bit of product. Uh, um, um, although, like for me, uh, it may take a while, a while to find its actual shape, its right shape. Uh, so I moved from, from uh, whether God exists to a different question. Whatever we begin, 
um, in the images of the tradition, we name that longing of our hearts, the ox. Uh, second. <laughs> Sorry, I. Uh, we, we, we find some traces. <laughs> a, a footprint, spore, you know, nothing like a little poop to point the way for us. Uh, 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 for me, it was probably the shift uh, uh, from is to what. Uh, um, I stopped, you know, you know, I had to work through, you know, is there a God? And I realized that the, the, the Abrahamic assertion, you know, of a, of, you know, the, the storm God doesn't, you know, doesn't work, but, but there's something else that that word occupies that shares with, 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 you know, with, uh, um, 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 God and, uh, and it becomes a what to me, what is God, you know, if not, if not uh, uh, a big human in the sky that you got to be really careful about dealing with. Um, for me and for all of us, it's a mysterious turning uh, when we launch on the spiritual journey. If we pay attention, if we allow our hearts to open to the possibilities, then it turns out possibilities about the third, the third image. If we're lucky, we confront the ox. Uh, the power and beauty is terrible, as terrible as it is. Uh, it presents, yeah. uh, you know, what's the, where's the, you know, Mo Moses, uh, 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 you know, that burning bush is not, is not the little, you know, candlelit thing. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the storm that confronts uh, uh, um, the Job. Uh, the the, uh, the 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 answer to the really stupid question from Arjuna, you know, uh, show me what you really look like. Yeah. Lo, I am death, the destroyer of worlds. Um, and it doesn't have to be that grand and mystical. Uh, um, maybe it's seeing your first newborn child. Possibly, it was a kiss. Maybe it's finding a job that's more than a job. It can happen walking in the woods. It can happen on the beach. It can, and I find this most compelling, it can happen in prison. It can happen in a foxhole. However, however it presents, that confrontation with reality, with the ox, changes everything. And you notice that's the third picture. Uh, uh, fourth. In Zen, there are many arguments endlessly apparent about whether you practice hard and then get enlightened, awakened, or you get enlightened, awakened, and then practice hard. Uh, what I find is that certainly in our Zen way, practice and awakening are intimately connected, uh, but not, it seems, in any causal way. Uh, they are two facets of the same reality. Uh, 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 but with a glimpse of the real, those of us committed to the way, we find our hearts calling and then redouble the disciplines of the heart. For me, they're sum summarized as sit down, shut up, pay attention, um, and then repeat. Uh, each of us needs to find uh, that practice which is right for us, um, our only true way. Um, uh, in this map, this is a noticing of a turning into a ferocity of heart, of opening ourselves into the deeper aspects of the practices. But I do want to underscore here that while my touchstone is is the Zen tradition, and I really do think that uh, for most human beings, um, the the practices of intimate presence are uh, are are you know are are the cleanest. Um, but no way the only and the and only your own heart knows where you're gonna where you should be going but at this point you should really be going <laughs> once you you have the clips uh then um fifth uh it becomes a long path you know uh where we find the disciplines are not so much about rules uh, that uh, contain us but the boundaries of our own hearts 
uh, and we discover they're permeable. Um, we cross freely from inside to out and outside to in. Um, the whole world becomes ours. Uh, here we discover the play of the world. Then, then trundling along in my book, but it is is I I, uh, I start talking about you know the the the, the various uh, you know problems along the way. Uh, one of my one of my dearest friends, uh, Dosho Port, uh, a, a Zen a Zen uh, a priest, um, he he has his own little I forget what it is some se- I think seven steps to awakening and and you know there's a glimpse there's grumpiness there's I forget distractions there's various things that you then you achieve uh, uh, um, um, the goal but but that's the sixth and the seventh one is and then you fall in a well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we fall in a lot of wells uh, uh, along the way. There are many distractions. There are many uh, pits and perils, uh, 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 and and the ten ox herding pictures barely scratches the surface of the of, of, the, of the perils. It's it's merely uh, the the cleaned up arc of the of the life. But then there's the sixth. Um, her, and with that, we hear the distant song, um, a tune it seems designed just for us, just for my heart, just for yours. Uh, um, it may be faint, but at this point, it's enough. Um, and we begin to follow it home. Seven. Um, here we forget all the stuff and bother. Uh, in the images, we find a simple hut. Uh, it's all we need. Eight. The image is an empty circle. Uh, uh, here we discover that nameless, intimate, recalling that place sung in the Tao Te Ching. Uh, the way that can be named is not the eternal name. The way that can be told is not the eternal way. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The unnameable is the eternally real. In many Eastern spiritual traditions, this is the sinum bonum. Uh, in fact, as I mentioned uh, um, um, in that little prelude about the history of the Oxarian pictures, for many, it ends here. You know, and, you know, that'd be a loss. Uh, uh, and for the pictures, we got two mark. Yeah. Uh, uh, nine. Uh, the image clutters up. We get a picture of nature. Uh, here we find our mother, uh, or if you prefer, our father. Um, uh, me, I love that continuing of the Tao Te Ching I, 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 passage I just cited from the, the fir- first, first chapter. Um, naming is the origin of all particular things. Uh, everything is named here. Uh, everything authentic, if passing. You great name, isn't it? Me, isn't that a wonderful name? Uh, but now discovered with new eyes. I was thinking, I was, I was, um, I'm delving into the, 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 the Psalms right now and uh, um, uh, long, long backstory, but, but I was uh, reading a, um, a, a passage from a, a, uh, a rabbi's memoir about studying with a, with an American, uh, Jewish Zen master and uh, Norman Norman Fisher, if, if you, you may know him, he's a prolific author, wonderful human being. Uh, um, so the author talks about going into a uh, synagogue service with uh, with with Norman and uh, and Norman, you know, f- throwing himself full into the liturgy and 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 the prayers, and he davens, and he does, you know, he's fully immersed in the practice, and. Afterwards, uh, um, he, you know, his friend asked him, so what, what's the deal? He says, well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, before, before I practiced Zen, you know, that didn't make any sense to me. I didn't know what that was. He says, now I understand it down to the bones. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, new eyes. Um, all things held with open hands. Bad metaphor, bad image, but hopefully it points. Now encountered with a different kind of love. Uh, and even that's not the end. You know, uh, then we come to Tim. Uh, uh, and I suspect, you know, for people like Liz, maybe there's something in the, uh, 
uh, there's a lot of tins in the, in the, in the metaphysical universe as well. Um, here, the 10th Oxfording picture shows a fat man uh, encountering the world. Um, in some picture versions of the pictures, the figure is actually walking into a marketplace. Uh, uh, one traditional commentary says it is returning to the world with bliss bestowing hands. Uh, uh, then there's a, a small inside a Buddhist joke in that usually uh, uh, from the original, uh, um, the, the image uh, uh, of the fat guy is Bute or Hotai. Um, he's the fat monk with a bag of gifts, sometimes called the laughing Buddha. Uh, in fact, I was uh, uh, taking a uh, driving with my mother-in-law past a, a, a Thai Buddhist temple, and they had a large seated Shakyamuni. And she said, "Why isn't he, the Buddha fat there?" Uh, yeah, the, you know, we uh, in the West sometimes get confused about that that guy. Uh, um, actually, actually, but you know, in history, he's uh, uh, appears to be a, a, a actual person. He was a Zen monk, um, and he wandered around with a bag bag of gifts that he gave to children, um, among many other things. Uh, and and in 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 Zen legend, he is uh, uh, um, um, Maitreya. His next his next round is as the next Buddha. Uh, so little 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 joke there about our our future we're all the buddha of the next age we're all the fat guy uh at least you know we can't be if we want uh then i'm, ahead, then, I'm ahead of the pack i'm the fat guy now yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. you know the, yeah definitely you know come out of spiritual practice and discovered i'm chubbier than i was 20 years ago it's perfect yeah yeah must be a sign of success so the 10 oxygen pictures i think it's a sign of heart disease but we'll, find out. well well you know i mean and this doesn't give you you know there's the there's the rub um we have lots of reasons to come into the spiritual path and um and not the least of them is is to fix things you know uh, to fix ourselves and but and you know and the the, the heart yearning is good the analysis is probably wrong. Uh, uh, you know, we almost, I've never met anybody. I thought that that began the spiritual path had something that seemed to make any sense uh, or a whole lot of sense. And, and, you know, in my small anecdote, is God real? Wrong question. You know, you put me in the, you know, on the, on the path. The real question is what is God? Uh, you know, what is it that we call? What, what is it that we want to name? You know, God, and what is it we need to name God? And and um, and open up the way of the fat man to me. Uh, um, then I uh, well, well, I say yeah. The issue here is to not take it literally, but to take it seriously, as seriously as a heart attack. Uh, let's see, I have a little bit more about, uh, well, I talked a little bit about koans there. And I can talk about that without reading, reading the text. Uh, cancel. Where are we in the, in our, in our time together? Uh, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're safe for another, uh, 10, 15. I want to give folks five sure. in, in between, in between, uh, talk so that folks can use the bathroom or grab some food or do whatever, but I think we got another 10, 15. So. Okay. Well, I, I, uh, uh, I, I have a, a, a boatload more that I would like to talk about, about the, 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 the 10th Oxford picture. Uh, okay. you know, if you're interested in the path, you know, uh, uh, super cool. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff, you know, uh, uh, but, but let's yeah. talk about becoming the fat guy. Uh, uh, I, I, I began that, this is kind of like the penultimate chapter in my in in in, in the manuscript, uh, and and I quote from uh, uh, Thomas Merton's version of the sayings of the Desert Fathers, uh, one of my favoriteest books. Um, um, Once there was a disciple of a Greek philosopher who was commanded by his master for three years to give money to everyone who insulted him. 
When this period of trial was, trial was over, the master said to him, now you can go to Athens and learn wisdom. When the disciple enter, was entering Athens, he met a certain wise man who sat at the gate, insulting everyone who came and went. He also insulted the disciple, who immediately burst out laughing. Why do you laugh when I insult you, said the wise man. Because, said the disciple, for three years, I've been paying for this kind of thing. And now you give it to me for nothing. Uh, uh, Enter the city, said the wise man. It's all yours. Uh, now, Abbot John the Dwarf, one of my favorite figures that goes through the Verbus Sonorum, um, the wisdom of the, the deserts, uh, he, he used to tell that story saying, this is the door of God by which our fathers rejoicing in many tribulations enter into the city of heaven. So in the great 12th century uh, koan anthology, the Blue Cliff Record, uh, uh, there's a uh, 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 um, a koan that, that connects for me. Elder Ding made his bows and asked his teacher, the great 19th, 9th century master, Lin Ji, what is the essence of the way? Lin Ji stood up from his seat, grabbed Ding by the lapels, shook him, slapped him, and then pushed him away. Ding just stood there. A monk standing by, think of a guardian angel. Think of every friend you've ever had who is true, says Elder Ding. Why don't you bow? In the story, this is the moment when the elder understood. Um, this is the secret of the heart of that lovely story of the desert fathers and mothers, although clearly not from the desert originally, or clearly to me anyway. Another word from someone standing by, a friend, a real friend. Insults, abuse, a slap, a push. And with that, in that, we find a healing. As we walk the intimate way, as we pass through the many traps, after we climb out of many wells, uh, um, after we've touched the great mystery and found everything, absolutely everything, tumble away, after we've begun to reconstruct who we are within the deep intimacies of life and death, and we fall into a couple of more wells and climb out, we come to the 10th Oxford. Barefoot and shirtless, enter the market, smiling through all the dirt and grime. No immortal powers, no secret spells, just teach the withered trees to bloom. The Invent Way is not over, but it becomes something new. There's a lovely line in the Jewel Mir Samadhi. Uh, I find it rise in my encounters. I find it arises in my dreams. You are not it, but in truth, it is you. The poem is commonly uh, attributed to Dong Shan Liang Chi, a ninth century Chan master and founder of the Tao Dong, the the, the Soto uh, school in Japanese. Dong Shan is also credited with the poetic map of awakening the five ranks, um, another document worth, worth pursuing someday. Uh, the Jewel Mirror is commonly chanted in contemporary Japanese Soto temples and monasteries. And for me, you are not it, but in truth it is you tumbled with a number of things. What is non-duality? Uh, what is it not? And what does this encounter place perspective we find ourselves at mean for us as spiritual practitioners, as people walking the intimate way? Uh, for Reho Masanagua, the line goes, you are not him, he is actually you. For William Powell, the line goes, you are not him, but he is clearly you. For Thomas Cleary, the line goes, you are not it, it is you. And the line that comes to me in my dreams from the official Soto translation, you are not it, but in truth, it is you. At some point, if we are a little lucky, we discover how true it is that we are a part of the great play of things. No one religion owns it, but each partakes in different ways. Uh, and different degrees. I recall the first time I read the opening line of Thunder Perfect uh, Mind 
the Coptic uh, poem uncovered in 1945 as a part of the Nag Hammadi library. Uh, you know, the uh, Gospel according to Thomas is probably the most famous find there, but this is, this is you know, took my breath away. For I am the first and the last. I am the honored one and the scorned one. I am the whore and the holy one. I am the wife and the virgin. I am the mother and the daughter. I am the silence that is incomprehensible and the idea whose remembrance is frequent. I am the voice whose sound is manifold I am, and the word whose appearance is multiple. I am the utterance of my name. He then you heavens and you also the angels and those who have been sent you and you spirits who have arisen from the dead. For I am the one who alone exists, and I have no one who will judge me. For me, the great way tumbled open when I found the answer to my koan. You are not God. I am not God. In truth, however, God is you. God is me. Getting the is not together with the is, opening up to the unfolding realities of this world, rising and passing. And then the long journey of integration. Uh, Hojo in Navajo, the beauty way, I, in beauty I walk, with beauty before me I walk, with beauty behind me I walk, with beauty above me I walk, with beauty around me I walk. It has become beauty again. The Buddha is said to have said, I alone am the Holy One. And one person after another has noticed this great unity as well. But it isn't isolated. That's a trap, but we avoid the trap or more likely we fall into it, but then we ha and still have to climb out. Nonetheless, we notice, we touch. The eye is simply a location, but we need to cast off our shoes because we notice we are in fact treading on solid, sacred ground. We're ancient and we're new. We're the same as we've always been, caught up in our wounds and our longings, but the healing is found found as nothing other than the being we are, that is you, that is me. However, the best of images is that fat guy. I am not it. My ideas, my desires, I own them. They play out as me, that fat guy, and my part of the great net of things. I am not it. But in truth, it is me. That in truth line may not exist in the jeweled mirror text originally, I'm not sure, but it does as a moment of turning, a realization, the great lacuna within which all things birth and die. Truth, a lovely word. Even if it's not there, it is felt. It is you. It is me. Voltaire once said, God is a circle whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere. That. This. You are not God, but in truth, God is you. This is the secret of the non-dual. Uh, and in this place, we find un the unknowing that is. And then pick your journey word, the word of invitation. When we find this intimate truth, we instantly return to the world. We wander freely. We bring a good word. We reach out a hand as we can. We are the infinite itself. But we are just this moment with all the limits Invitations being a moment brings the fat guy, you, me, the great intimate. My presentation. Totally happy to take questions, comments. Uh, I'm, but I need guidance. I'm speaking into a blank phone. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. That was that was excellent. The uh, and uh, I was going to say, by the way, just for the record, I think you can make good coin reading the Nag Hammadi because your rendering of Thunder Perfect Mind was great. Um, I mean, who can uh, <laughs> who can who can fail to be? Uh, I was going to say, fail to be impressed by uh, uh, Thunder Perfect Mind. And I think when you when you add the perspective, particularly the the context in which you've you've raised it, that you've tied the two together, uh, with that you know, with the with the with the pictures, and of course with the sense of the boundlessness, um, is a good combo. And you know, and I've been kind of traveling, 
parallel or related or inquisitive paths along, you know, multiple things for a long time. But uh, it's the, you know, it's the it's the first time where I've encountered, you know, somebody who who rolls it together beyond a, a, a just an intellectual exercise of comparative religion, I guess. So I found that to be pretty, pretty impactful. Thank you. Questions? Because there's one thing I want to, if there's no questions, then, then there's one thing I wanted to, uh, one note I wanted to wrap on, and I alluded to it, uh, uh, gave people an advanced look um, uh, as we were waiting to work out technical snags, is uh, when, I, when I went through uh, James's bio, I mentioned in there that uh, a long time ago in a galaxy far away, uh, James had been uh, ordained a, a priest and consecrated a bishop in the independent sacramental movement. And, uh, um, you know, doing what uh, good caretakers do, you know, he, he encountered, of course, a lot of people of uh, people's communi uh, communities, organizations, and, and various teachers, priests, and bishops during his time serving in the independent sacramental uh, movement, serving in that kind of Christian context as a priest and bishop. And fortunate for us and fortunate for history, he saved all the stuff that he encountered as he encountered it. And through a winding uh, road of, you know, meticulously, uh, taking care of those records and also uh, passing them down the line in a chain of custody, which also includes uh, Father Donald Donato and now ourselves. Um, we now have those records uh, preserved, hopefully for uh, for for all time, um, because we uh, we were given custody of them and uh, resolve to scan them and make them available uh, and online for future generations for folks who are independent who are interested in uh, the independent sacramental movement interested in gnosticism esotericism christian mysticism so um uh, accordingly uh, because it's a significant archive of uh, a couple hundred uh, documents over the last 30 to, to 50 years um, we decided the most appropriate thing to do was to give it James's name. And we've called it the James Ford Independent Sacramental Movement Archive, and we've put it online. So uh, you folks are the first people to actually see the project in its, in its complete form. Everybody else will get it uh, uh, next week. And uh, um, so I, I wanted to, uh, I, I felt the most appropriate time to let folks know that we were going to be, that A, we had done it, and B, that we're publishing it, um, was to do it on the tail end of James's talk. Um, there is a variety of uh, interesting documents in there, the Liberal Catholic Church, there's a Valentinian Gnostic Church, there's even a Johannine Catholic Church, a, uh, you know, a, a little bit more kind of New Agey predecessor to two hours working in the Joannine or Joannite stream as they envisioned it, um, and so it's interesting to read how uh, uh, other traditions kind of or other organizations or figures throughout recent history have kind of approached some of the same idea, like the incorporation of archangels in the ritual, the incorporation of gnosis and, and gnosticism, and. I consider myself, uh, you know, an amateur historian of, of all these things and concepts and organizations. Usually when somebody has a question about some obscure group, uh, you know, they usually come to me and I can usually tell you, oh, well, that's so-and-so and that's whatever. But when we crack these open, which was, you know, three or four solid boxes of material, um, there was a good portion of stuff that I had never heard of. And I assure you, I'm pretty thorough. Uh, so uh, we have we have digitized all this material, and we have put it online, and we have named it in 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 James's honor, uh, you know, in recognition not only of uh, his meticulousness in keeping track of everything, but also his contribution to uh, the the wider field of spirituality, of religion, of Zen, and of course uh, Gnosticism, for which you know, we all benefit. I mean, he is a significant link in a, in a chain, not only in our own tradition, but in, in, in several traditions. And so the, the, the best face for that, uh, 
uh, archive is his own. So I wanted to say thank you to you, James, for doing that. And of course, for, uh, uh, you know, for, for letting us do it, for entrusting us with that information and uh, deciding that, uh, you know, we were a good place to, to make it happen. I hope we can do, uh, uh, I, can, I hope we can do your work and, and spirit credit in the years to come. And if we don't, feel free to tell me. <laughs> I, I'm very confident. Uh, I, you all are doing such amazing work. I'm, I'm really uh, uh, honored by this and, and gratified that uh, I have some small connection to you all as well. Thank you. With that, I'm going to wrap up because we're eight minutes into the next thing and I can see there are already people waiting, I think. So um, thank you kindly, James, for, for, for coming and doing this. That was an excellent presentation. And thank you for struggling through the, uh, the technology and the, the bags of ice. <laughs> Much appreciated. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you. And we're going to hop into our next presentation. So I'll see you shortly.